pleasure to introduce to you the man of the hour, Tony. Hello, and welcome to the final episode of the 2015 season. This is At the Gates, and I am Tony, your host. I am outside of Gate 34 on this brisk autumn day at Target Field in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The date, October 4th, 2015. The competitors are the Minnesota Twins, who are above 500 and will finish with a winning season, hosting the playoff-bound Kansas City Royals. Today's guest is... Paul Com. Yeah, Paul is new to the show. But basically a co-host. Yes, at this point, he's, uh, what is this, your fourth? No, fourth or fifth, but you know. Yeah, I think fourth. Fourth. Fourth one, because this is the fifth podcast. So uh, he's basically the the guy who's always outside of Gate 34 here with me. Um, before we get too deep into the show, let's congratulate the Minnesota Twins. Um, this is their first winning season since 2010. And most people thought that uh, 70 to 75 wins was going to be the tops for this team. But they uh, really did um, do well, and they, they just blossomed earlier than expected and, and actually kept fighting for a playoff spot and uh, kept playing meaningful baseball until the second to last game of the year. Um, They were only eliminated at game 161. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. So that's really cool. Um, I didn't think that I would be able to own phantom playoff tickets for for the Twins, and that's something that that I have. It it sucks that they won't go, go used, but... Hey, like I said, we finished with a, a winning record, and that's something that they can definitely build on, and especially with all these young rookies, it's looking good for 2016. How about, what do you think, Paul? I told everybody before this season that the Twins were going to go at least 500. I got some people to think that I knew what I was talking about, and others just laughed in my face, but you know, I, I called it, and I think next year is going to be even better, and especially with everything we've seen from the young talent this year. I don't see how 2016 couldn't be a better year. Do you take any credit? I mean, you you share the name with the manager, and now that he's doing well, I would say that that's like at least 25% because of you. I would say at least um, 33% because, uh, yes, the same name. It is in the name for sure. All right. I'll accept that. And uh, since we're also talking about the playoffs, let's review the brackets. And they're not hard and firm yet because there's still some uh, issues to to work out. The Dodgers and the Mets are fighting for that number two or number three spot. And right now the, uh, the Dodgers have the edge. And also in the AL, the Royals and Blue Jays are fighting for that number one spot. It's it's looking like right now the Royals have it, but who knows if the Twins win and the Blue Jays get it. It's it's all up in the air. Also, uh, the last wild card spot is right now in the, the hands of the Astros. If they can win today, it's theirs. If not, they have to hope that the, the Angels also lose. But otherwise, we could be seeing a, a game 163. But enough of the could should and would um this is the 15th straight year of non-repeat champion um that doesn't mean that there haven't been champions that are the same in other years but it just means that no one has repeated with back-to-back titles um in the last 15 years the giants have won three championships the red sox also won three um the cardinals won two and the yankees only won one but right before that they were uh, three peat champions from 98 until 2000. So let's look at the, the NL bracket. It's the, the Cardinals are the number one spot, and the Pirates and Cubs have the play in game. Um, and then it's also the Dodgers versus Mets for the, the other side of the bracket. Who do you have coming out of the NL, Paul? For you're saying for the next for, series or the whole for, thing? Who, who makes it to the NLCS? I would for sure say the Dodgers because, you know, they got hot and they've been repeating. And like you just said, uh, they've actually won the last couple of years. It's the first time they've won three in a row for a while now. So I definitely think they're hot and that's going to continue. So you see the the Dodgers. Who else uh, in the National League would they face? Well, obviously it can't be the Cubs because uh, if the... Oh, I'm sorry. It could be the Cubs, yes. So I, I would consider the Cubs playing the Dodgers in the future here. 
So you have Cubs, Dodgers, and the NLCS. Um, I am going to go. This, this is a tough one. I'm, I'm going to go with Greg on this one. Let, let's channel back my my at the gates from like a month ago, and I'm going to go with the Mets versus the Cardinals. Um, I just see the Cardinals as, as being really strong. I think the Cubs have something special, but I don't know that they have enough yet to, to kind of punch through and make a really big run in the playoffs. I think that Larry Larson is going to disagree with me, but who cares? He's not at the gates here with us. Um, and then in the a- ALCS, I'm going to take uh, – it. it's hard for me to say this because we're going to see them right now, but I, I see the Royals and I see the Blue Jays. So that means that the uh, four fighting for the for the final four spots are going to be in my side: the Cardinals, Mets, Royals, and Blue Jays. How about you, Paul, for the ALCS? Well, I really don't see the Yankees going anywhere. It doesn't seem like they're playing for anything. I mean, even though they are in the playoffs, um, competing for a spot in the playoffs. But I would for sure take the Blue Jays over the Rangers, and then I have to agree with you: the Royals over Houston, also. All right, so that that gets us to the World Series. Um, we have different NL brackets, but we have the same for the AL. I'm gonna go. I'm still gonna go with the Blue Jays. They're just really hot right now, and I'm gonna go. Unfortunately, with the Cardinals, but I'm gonna take the Blue Jays winning it all. So Blue Jays over the Cardinals in the Tony Voto World Series 2015. How about you? Well, I'm really unsure at this point if uh, the Dodgers and Cubs would play each other. I'm not sure who'd come out on top. I'm just going to call it right now with the Cubs because this is the first time in, I don't know, X amount of years that they've been in. So they are obviously playing. They're on fire. And then I would have them up against the Blue Jays. So who do you think is going to win? For all those Cubs fans out there, I, I'm going to go with you this year. Wow. So it's kind of a back to the future pick. The Cubs win the World Series. They they don't defeat Miami, which I mean, how could they? They they're in the National League. That's that's one thing that Back to the Future had wrong, but Paul called it Cubs over Blue Jays, and I had Blue Jays over the Cardinals. So Let's talk about the awards in both leagues. Um, starting with Manager of the Year, uh, for the National League, I have Joe Madden. It's hard to argue with him. And then in the AL, Jeff Bannister. Uh, Paul Molitor was looking really good for a while, but it's it's hard to, to take away from what Jeff Bannister did. They were in about the same boat as the Twins. They were some of the worst records in baseball for a couple of years, and then they came back here and now made it to the to the playoffs winning their division um paul got close with with this group of guys here with the twins but just didn't make the playoffs i think you have to give the edge to jeff bannister i'm just gonna agree with you because you said it pretty well sweet then for rookie of the year uh national league i have chris bryant it's he's looking like he's basically an mvp and he's a rookie so i think he he takes the crown there and in the al it really came down to two guys um either Francisco Lindor or Carlos Correa, and I had Carlos Correa. Um, I think his position being a shortstop and just the numbers that he's put up, he's he's been amazing. He's been consistent all year long, and either one is deserving, but I think just Carlos Correa has has been strong from, from day one. Again, I have to agree with you there. And then for Cy Young, this is where uh, it's going to get tricky. Uh, National League, when I wrote this a couple days ago, I had Zach Grinke. I think I'm still going to stick with him. Um, Arietta is so close in my opinion, but just how historic Grinke's been, I think I think he takes the edge. Um, he, he put up some franchise records, and those franchise records are held by a guy named Sandy Koufax before. And if you're beating Sandy Koufax, you probably get the Cy Young that year. And then in the AL, I have Dallas Keuchel for uh, the Houston Astros. So Astros get two big awards out of their guys. Um, he gets the edge here, and... Going back to Grinky, he would actually be the sixth guy to win in both the AL and NL. Roger Clemens, uh, Randy Johnson, Pedro Martinez, Gaylord Perry, and Roy Halladay being the other guys who did it in both leagues. How about you, Paul? Do you have any difference in uh, Cy Young? No. Nothing. We are unanimous. So uh, if, if the... 
if the baseball writers are looking for two voters that have very sound opinions and very uh, much uniform opinions, call us up and, and we'll be voting for you. Lastly is the M MVP. Uh, National League, Bryce Harper takes it. He just put up ungodly numbers. And if he would have had any supporting cast around him and, you know, maybe people weren't trying to choke him, they may have gone a little bit deeper this year. Um, and in the AL, because he's really put the Blue Jays on their back, Josh Donaldson, He's he's been amazing. And I think, Paul, did I just steal your picks? He just stole my picks. Wow. Um, Before he even said Josh Donaldson, I was shaking my head saying, don't say it. Don't say it. Well, I mean, I, I think that tells you what, what Donaldson has done. Just homers, ribbies, even average, and his defense has been amazing as well. He's just an all-around player, and I think he's going to be one of the guys that you look at. Uh, if if the Blue Jays, in my mind, are going to win the World Series, they have to have a big big series or two out of Donaldson to, to keep them afloat. And then going back to Bryce Harper, um, let's quickly talk about um, some villains in the Major League Baseball um, because of a little uh, Jonathan Papelbon incident. Some, some list of villains that I have here are Pete Rose because of, well, it's Pete Rose, George Steinbrenner because of what he did with the Yankees and how he grew that team and what he did with free agency, really, um, throughout the 70s and into the 80s. Um, Bud Selig, especially around here, because he wanted to contract a couple teams, and one of those teams was the Twins. So good luck getting anything happy out of us when it comes to Bud Selig. I think around uh, the other teams in baseball, they might not see it, but if you're up in Canada in a baseball list, Montreal, um, or in Minneapolis, where it could have been a baseball list, Minneapolis, you will for sure see this. Yes. Um, so I think that that's one way that Manfred has ac actually, I don't know, he's he's coming in to something much better and much more optimistic just because there's no longer that name of Bud Selig on top of Major League Baseball. So if, if he can bring it back to Canada especially, I think the Canadians are going to despise Selig that much more and just love Manfred through the roof. Um, another villain is Scott Boris because of what he's done with free agent clients. We've seen salaries grow year after year, and one of the leading guys to get um, long-term contracts and huge money is Scott Boris. Ozzy Guillen being another one because of his comments and colorful attitude, to, to say the least. Jeffrey Loria because, well, we've seen what he does at, as an owner. A.J. Pierzynski, um, unfairly so, I think, just because, yeah, he's he's gritty, he's dirty, he's he gets under your skin, but he's he's not really that bad, especially coming from Minnesota. It's not like he wanted out of here. It's not like he was demanding. It's not like he was Chuck Knobloch. He, he just played the game hard, and, you know, he, he rubs you the wrong way. He's one of those guys where you hate it when he's on the opposition, but you love it when he's on your team. Another guy, John Rocker, um, he just an idiot from the from the late 90s, from the Braves. Jose Canseco, because of his steroids and his tell-all books. Um, Kurt Schilling, especially recently because of his idiotic rampages on, on Twitter. Uh, he just says stupid things that he just... It, it, it's Kurt Schilling. Um, A-Rod, because it's A-Rod. Um, Jonathan Papelbon, because of what he did um, recently to Bryce Harper, as well as he's he's just had a knack for basically trying to end his uh, tenure with whatever team he's at on a very sour note. And lastly, um, I'd say, have to say the biggest villain, um, because of what he did to the game for about a 60 to 70 year period, would be Cap Anson. A lot of people don't know him because he was in the dead ball era, but basically what he did was go to the commissioner at the time of Major League Baseball and said that if he continues to let uh, black players on the field, he would organize a strike and um, the white players would not play at that point. So um, a lot of people don't know that black people were in baseball before that, but after Cap Anson's uh, threat of a strike, they basically said no black people allowed in Major League Baseball, and that stood for about 70 years. And that's, I would have to say that that's the 
ugliest mark. And if there's ever anyone that says anyone that took steroids shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, well, you have one of the worst men that did something terrible to the game of baseball for longer than his playing career in Cap Anson, who is in the Hall of Fame right now. Um, travesty, but you know what? Let's let's tell the story as it is, and hopefully people can, can learn, and we move past that. Um, talking about playoff baseball, since we have some time, let's talk about Game 163 of 2009. Do you remember that, Paul? I just remember the concept. <laughs> yeah, the concept being that the Twins and Tigers had identical records at the end of the season, and someone needed to take the division. And do you remember who took the division, Paul? Well, it wasn't the Tigers. Oh, you hear that, Detroit? Suck it. Uh, I doubt that anyone from Detroit is listening to this, and if you are, well, you're a Tigers fan, so sorry. (laughs) Um, Basically, this was the unexpected extra game at the Dome. Um, A lot of people thought that the day before was going to be the last game at the Dome and that we were going to have to say our goodbyes. We had a big, long ceremony, um, and then it turns out we won. The team that we needed to lose lost, and uh, there was going to be another game. And it's not technically a playoff game, uh, but this was probably the most exciting regular season game that I've been to and will probably ever attend. And let me be the first one to say that, Brandon Inge, you were actually hit. Looking at the replay, it, it did hit your shirt. I'll concede that, but you know what? It's, it's in history books now. We can't change it. Sorry, buddy. We still won. Uh, Secondly, this was the second year in a row for a game 163 for the Twins. um, And this was the one that was finally not decided by a coin toss. It actually went to who had the better head-to-head record for home field advantage, something that we were very angry about when it came to the White Sox because we had a better head-to-head record. But because they won the coin toss, the game was played at Chicago. And because of that, we probably lost one nothing because, well, they had home field and, and we didn't. Um, and lastly, the most important, the Twins won. I don't know if you know that, but I think we've said it a few times. Twins win 6-5 to five in extra innings. And, of course, it was off of the bat of, you know, probably our biggest power hitter, Alexi Casilla. Yes. Paul, do you have a story about Alexi Casilla at all? Do you have anything of his? I bought, foolishly bought... A $70 bat by Alexi Casilla. Hey, you have a Game 163 winner in your collection. Not many people can say that. Not the bat itself, just the name. Yes, the, yeah, not the actual bat, but... Eh. I mean, otherwise that $70 should have been a steal. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, let's let's go through some Twins notables that were in that game. Um, Denard Spann, Carlos Gomez, Michael Kadire, Delman Young... Scott Baker, and like I said, Alexi Casilla with the game winner. And the only one that remains a twin is Joe Maurer. Um, Tigers, they had Curtis Granderson, Meglio Ordonez, Brandon Inge, Rick Porcello, Fernando Rodney, who got the loss. So uh, his arrows were not working that day. And the only guy that remains a Tiger today, Miguel Cabrera. So that's right. Only one guy on each team remains. So that, that 2009 rivalry is all but basically dead. Now, did Maglio or Donez go to the Tigers after the White Sox? Correct. And when was this other 163 with the White Sox? He was part of the Tigers then. So he didn't get to play both games. That would have been pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, as a player, that would have been awesome. Um, Two other notables on the Tigers roster, Cleet Thomas and Wilkin Ramirez, not because they're amazing, but because they would eventually become short-term twins that we picked up in our crappy four-year span that we just tried to go after waiver wires that that maybe panned out, and really, they didn't. I mean, we we lost 90-plus for four years, and they were on those teams, so that tells you all that you need to know. Um, So that was it. Game 163 was probably the best game that I'll ever attend in my life, and I'm happy to uh, to be a part of it. Now let's uh, finish it up with some ball hawking talk. Um, I broke 100 for the regular season in my last game and have now over 500 lifetime balls. I'm pretty stoked about that, and my average right now is more than six a game, which 
absolutely amazes me, especially since I have zero double-digit games. That tells you that I'm really consistent, but it also is a little bit frustrating because I just don't have those big games. And Paul, how about you tell us what you accomplished? Well, uh, yesterday at the game, I snagged seven balls, and the second one there was my 300th overall. Uh, That's including spring training. But earlier in the season, just actually a a week, probably two weeks ago, I also snagged my 200th. That's just counting regular season baseballs. And also, just the other day, I noticed that you broke 200 at Target Field, so that's pretty sweet. Um, There's only three of us that have done that. And how do you feel about that accomplishment? Well, I was actually unaware of that until 30 minutes ago when you brought that up. So I hopefully, going back and looking at which ball it is, I didn't give it away. <laughs> That's. I have a history of doing that with important balls. Yeah, maybe like the last strikeout of, uh, of Phil Hughes' record-breaking year last year when he set the, the number of strikeouts to walk ratio. You had the last strikeout ball, and you ended up giving that away to some little girl or something like that, was it? Uh, no comment. Yeah, that's a bummer. Oh, well, it happens, and I'm sure that she loves it and has never let that ball off. Of, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so with two pairs of batting gloves, a Joe Maurer bat, four lineup cards, 136 balls and counting, as well as two of those being commemoratives, I'd have to say that uh, 2015 was pretty great. Um I picked up a new stadium along the way, which I miss you, Minute Maid Park. And uh, I visited a repeat favorite, Hello Kaufman. And hopefully this is uh, icing on the cake today, Um, one last shot at something big. Um, Either way, I'm permanently hooked, and we will see you again in 2016. Some things to look forward to are an appearance at Twins Fest, uh, the season ticket holder exclusive clubhouse sale, possibly spring training which paul and i might be going to we might not depending on our schedules and for sure opening day at target field on april 11th 2016 where the twins take on the white Sox. once again this is not brought to you by twin cities veg fest at the university of minnesota's kaufman memorial hall which is november 1st 2015 come meet mateo fisher and myself we will be signing autographs all day long for all of our very important listeners um there will be free food as well as meet some le- local vegan friendly businesses and learn about the this environment environmentally conscious conscience i can't say it an extra healthy food choice uh Basically, in fact, you can actually find plenty of unhealthy food, too. After all, there are delicious dishes with plenty of taste, sugar, and fat. Um, But just check it out. Uh, Mateo and I, like I said, will be there. And uh, it's a fun time. Even if you don't normally eat vegetarian or vegan food, it was just vegetarian day. It's fun to try. And uh, free food really isn't going to hurt you. With that, happy 2015, and we will see how our predictions go. Anything to add, Paul? Have a great off season. Ladies and gentlemen, Major League Baseball rules prohibit fans from going on the playing field or interfering with the ball on play. Fans seated in the box seats adjacent to the playing field are asked to please remove their wraps from the railing. And the fans in the outfield sections, please do not throw anything or anybody back on the playing field. Smoking in this stadium is not allowed. No smoking in the Metrodome.